A map as important as this, a match as important as this, as I remove my water from the desk, deserves my glasses because that means I can actually see what I'm casting and not just talk bollocks. It's the grand final of Assembly Winter. It's summer. What, 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 it's winter. It's winter. It's winter. It's, I was watching Australian television and it's summer down there. I actually am watching Australian television. You are. And it is summer down there. So I'm confused. But north of the equator, it's winter. And this is a chance for two teams who have never won on a stage to win a tournament right here, right now. Yeah, a lot on the line. Obviously, we've been following Outlaws, one of the finals teams here, all the way through. Played literally every match on stream so far, and they've been actually fairly impressive up to this point. They've managed, even though they've had a rough couple of moments here and there, they've always battled back, and that's how they've actually secured a final spot. We saw that just a couple of uh, well, minutes ago versus Planet Key Dynamics. And they're going to go up against Dislown. The French side with uh, yes. a couple of old uh, old names in there. Petit Scale from the Baiki teams back in the early days of CSGO. Uh, they had a much easier time in the semifinals. Much, much easier time in the semifinals. However, it, it was a long and grueling semifinals for Outlaws. They yep. just finished playing. They immediately have to get back on stage and do it all again. Benefit is their PCs are sitting there warm and ready. The bad news is their mental fortitude and mental elasticity has been stretched to its limit already. Yeah, Rocking was talking about it in the interview, the fact that, well, these players are all heart. Well, got some glory, so maybe that's going to pull them through. You know, exhaustion is not a thing if you just want it badly enough. It's true. It's true. Although, um, it doesn't change anything for me when I'm exhausted. If I want it bad enough or not, I'm just tired. Yeah, uh, that's fair enough. I think that's just the normal human reaction. It's true. Well, I, I think we've got an interesting map pool for this. I'm going to read it out to you. You might want to read the right... Often do. Yes. Um, <laughs> Planet Key's not playing this one. Thank you very much. Here we go. As I was saying, it is going to be pick number one. Brought to you by Dislone, who comes to the upper seed in this, coming from the bracket. Pick number one is Dust 2, so this could be the last time we see it in a tournament. Very well. Katowice has announced they go to Inferno. Pro League, I expect, is going to follow seed. I think they have to because Everyone else it's a is. very long season and the finals aren't until May, so why would you still be playing Dust 2 when the time May rolls around? No, you're going to be moved on, you're going to be evolved, you're going to be on Inferno. So I think, I think ESL may, if they don't do it on week one, and will do it. And pick two, therefore, is Overpass. So it's farewell to Dust 2. Hello to Overpass and the Decider. The same Decider we just had for Outlaws, which they were prevalent on in 16-14 victory. A comeback on their T side. If they can improve their CT, it's Cobblestone. They could be in a good position if it goes to the third map. So I'm going to favor Outlaws in this with a 2-1 scoreline if it gets that far. What we don't know is Dislon. We know they're good on CT, or excuse me, on Dust 2. They're a French team. They had a good map. We don't know what they're like on Overpass. Yeah, and that's going to be the big question mark as well because we haven't seen Overpass uh, on stream so far, and that means we haven't seen Outlaws play on Overpass, but they pick it, so they obviously have something in store for us. I'm a bit worried for them going into Dust 2 because that has been their automatic ban for 90% of the games here. As soon as they go up against the French team, they decide to not veto it. Kind of a strange move, but in the end, we're going to get to see what they have in store for us. It's nice like a trophy, you know. I might just steal that and take home with me. I could probably drink a lot of champagne out of that. Well, you need to afford a shame. You need to be able to afford champagne as well, Matt. That's a good point. I can't afford anything. Well, I mean, you're getting most of your money into a racing car. That's not a bad trade-off. Well, is it, though? How many times am I going to drive it in a year? I mean, well, that's up to you, isn't it? That's true. That's true. It is uh, it is up to me. Events will be the dominant force of what my occupy time is occupied with. We're in the server, but we're not yet ready to roll, so we are going to get into Dust 2 relatively quick. Now, the French side who picked the map, therefore don't get to pick the side. It's CT to start. The one benefit when they do that system to picking a map like Dust 2 is that sides aren't as important. So if you pick Dust 2, it doesn't really matter where you start, whereas if you pick Overpass, it kind of does. So Outlaws pick Overpass, and does Lone start out CT? I think if they're going to win it, they win it in two. I'm kind of leaning the same way, actually. Um, to me, the, obviously, the, the big you know, question mark in this is uh, Overpass. We haven't seen it from either of the sides so far. So anything can really happen, and I think it's going to be very beneficial for the French side to start on the CT, as you mentioned. So it's going to be interesting to see how that plays out. Cobble, we know what Outlaw can do, or Outlaws can do. The one issue they have is on their CT side, yes. there on that map. But, you know, at least they'll have plenty of times to actually try out different setups or try new things and see what works. I'm, I'll be very surprised if they run the same CT pistol, for mm -hmm. instance, on Cobble once more. But I don't know what remains to be seen. I'm not really sure what's holding us up right now because, every, as you said, every player is on the server. 
I imagine there's probably a pre-show timing that goes on with Finnish TV so Could they can well. finish their segment. Not to. Needs his moments of brilliance. Okay? He needs to be and his in the limelight. It seems like he's in full form right now. Talking away. They've got more insight to these players, apparently, than we do. But they've got <laughs> map dynamics that are worth talking about. Dust 2 going out. What do you change? We talked about it a little bit. I think yeah. B gets opened up. I think the tunnels have... Either a skybox that doesn't exist above tunnels anymore to smoke off and be site, mm -hmm. or you inevitably have to lift the roof out of tunnels entirely. And if you do that, then you can get smokes into the site. Other thing that might change is you go back to the old door style. I think, I think actually I would do two of those things. Uh, and that would be open the skyboxes on the entire map. I think that's something that, well, it's, some, it's been something I've missed ever since uh, CSS Dust 2. Mm -hmm. So I would like to see that because it opens up for a lot more tactical creativity, and uh, that's always fun to see. But in addition to that, I think you should, yeah, reverse the doors, uh, B doors on, uh, on especially the map. going into B. Yeah, you don't care especially, about mid doors as much, do you? No doors. Uh, I would love to see them going back to being wooden again, so you don't do you know twenty one and seven with an AK exactly. through. Exactly. Yep. Uh, but you know you can only get so many changes through, right? And then yep. can be can ask for too much. And if anything, maybe to change things up a little bit probably change some of the textures and by that also you know the the penetration on some of the the walls on the map so maybe if you get something like the the classic noob spot right in on 1.6 dust 2 that yes. area is yep. dangle on the b-bomb site stuff like that could be fun to see it being implemented because right now we're seeing less and less um in in terms of like what kind of uh, materials you can uh, have penetration on and in the same sense you have you know less opportunities because of more and more sky boxes for instance, the new Inferno has more skyboxes than the old one, and I think it limits uh, it limits a lot of the opportunities that players could use to, to shine and actually, you know, bring out. It's like the first time we saw Happy bust out these one-way smokes on Inferno. Yes. For instance, like stuff like that is cool to see the first time it happened. Obviously, it grows old eventually when it becomes to the point where it's abusive, but it's it's very exciting to see teams and players being creative with how they play and try to kind of change how a map is played entirely because of it. Yep. Yeah, no, and, and I think that there is some changes to be made. I think graphically as well, it looks dated yeah, in no, comparison to Train coming in. Yeah, and some of the newer maps that aren't even in the map pool, Santorini, stuff like that season, yeah. which was redone. And, and obviously Nuke. So I, I think that, that it, it's, it's definitely due for that at the very least. I think yeah. there will be minor changes. They have to keep the essence of the map. Exactly. They can, but it will be I think it will be enough. an outcry if they bring back Dust Tool and it looks... Nothing like Dust Tool in that sense. Yeah. If the layout's completely messed up, or if they added weird ladders everywhere and that kind of thing, so uh, hopefully they'll keep it to a bare minimum, just the facelift for now. Maybe you know, change a couple of doors, <laughs> but well, uh, it remains to be seen. I think it's still some ways into the future before we see it reintroduced. I think for uh, I can't exactly remember how long of a time span there is usually uh, between Inferno the maps introductions. Inferno went but out last year after Cluj. It was announced that it was going to go out. I think it didn't yeah. happen until a little bit after that. But they reintroduced new. And that's when they reintroduced yeah. Nuke, was when Inferno went out, which was mid... So maybe it's longer than that, because it was mid-summer? Nuke came back I in? I think. And... Because they said at Clues they were going to do it, and then everyone kind of forgot about it and all complained when it happened, but it was, it yeah. was obvious that it was going to happen. It was already announced at that point in time yeah. to the players and teams. Now, it, I'm trying to think of exactly when the date was. Someone in chat surely would know, but... Yeah, it was a significant amount of time that it was it was absent from the map pool when Nuke went out. Yes. So normally so to there bring, is a it was Train that came back in to bring that Inferno was, yeah. back in now and Dust Two goes out. What's the rotation? The other question is, what's the next map afterward? Cobblestone. God. See, that's the thing. I I have a I have trouble seeing. Well, I, I mean, at this point, every map would have been retouched exactly. by Val, right? So yeah. you kind of have to go again through that cycle again. And or I think Cobblestone should be the first altogether. on the docket. I, th yeah. I think it has to be, but I'm not sure how Server and Valve are going to be about it in terms of what they want to change because they've already made a ton of changes oh, to the map. Oh my god, it's the most changed map in history. Exactly, and it's still it's still a way better map than what it was, but it still has quite a ways to go. Wow. And, uh, well, the expression on Matt's face can only be described as... I just, I'm shocked. Despair. We've had three different leaders in the Bathurst 12 hour already have incidents. This is the most dramatic 12 hour I've seen, and we're only two hours into it. Yep. So I'm, I'm doing multitasking. I have to, you know. As, uh, we still wait. So the issue on stage right now is with the Bulgarian side. I think they're having some sort of Steam authentication error or something uh, along those lines. I'm seeing people scratching their head and looking relatively confused. Uh, for some reason, I thought you were talking about the, the smoke actually, like steam coming out of... Yeah, the PCs are just lit, on, like, lit on fire. Yeah, because there's a fair bit of smoke 
on their end as well. They're doing full tests and diagnostics on the PCs at this point in time as well. Admins fully around. I'm not 100% sure whose PC that is. I think I that's think, Spillin? Yeah, I think it's Spillin because he's the one that's standing up. I can see it on his jersey. Yep, that's yep. him. That's the man. And he's taking the headset completely off as well. So hopefully we get back underway in a relatively swift fashion. That wheel does not look good. No, that's broken suspension on the front right. That's, that's contact with the wall. And that is a Pro-Am car that was leading overall above the GT Pro cars. Chaz Mostet's one of the drivers in that. It's a BAT Supercars that This is a big race for them. If they win that as an AM category class, that would have been huge. And they've now had a brake issue. Now a suspension issue. I wonder if the two's related, if you couldn't get enough speed scrubbed off and understeered into the wall. But now that's, that's massive because Ferrari has had Bentley with an issue, Nissan with an issue, McLaren with one car that didn't even make the starting grid, the second one with a misfire and an issue, and now Ferrari's on the... I, and I said this, and who else? There was one other, one other lead car that had a... Porsche? Bentley had an issue. Did the I Porsche have said an that. issue as well? Porsche did not. Porsche's actually... Well, they're in the garage right now, so yes, yeah. they now have. I think they're doing a... Well, one of the, one of the Porsches this. got mowed into the wall. That was but a B-Class Porsche, though, so oh, that's okay. the Porsche Cup car. That's not the GT3 oh. Pro or Pro or Am. And they're doing suspension work on the Porsches. That Ferrari's literally going to be a lap ahead. Oh, it's the Audi that had the issue. That's the one. Coming down and through the cutting. Yeah. So no one cares about racing, but I do. And there's your updates from the Bathurst 12 hour. Yeah. So consumer tips, Ferrari, most reliable car out there. So, you know, if you're looking to buy, there you go. Yes. As we glance upon the spectacle is the, that is the stage. And they are still doing work. And then we glance back to us. As always. Oh, all right. We uh, kind of just sitting here waiting to get some sort of information as to what's going on right now. It seems like there are less people sitting down by the PCs, though. Yeah, there is less and less. I'm seeing a lot of the Bulgarian players absent from the stage altogether as yeah. they continue to run diagnostics on that PC. In fact, in Ford's the time that they start to work on that PC, all the players, the other nine, have left the stage altogether, including the French side. I imagine that's because they're out back looking to do a march in for intros. So they're probably waiting to get underway for the finals, yeah. and Spellin's forced to stay on stage to make sure everything's working out for him. Yeah, don't want to go into the finals just to realize that one round in, stuff is not working out as intended. Let's bring up. I'm looking at that. Is that live update? Live timing. All right, who's got the fastest lap so far? Don't care about lap time, it's, it's a 12 hour race. Well, true, but still, who has the uh, lap best time? Best lap throughout the course of the race is a 2.029, which is actually about as fast as they did in qualifying, set by none other than Craig Lowndes, no surprise, who currently is in the Ferrari. It's Craig Lowndes, Mark Winnebottom, or sorry, Jamie Wincup, two Australian legends, teammates for years on the Holden Racing team. No, on, not the Holden Racing team, why can I not even remember this? Anyway, Red Bull, racing uh, Red Bull is Racing Australia, I think is what they're called now. Um, and yeah, they're together with Tony Valander, who's a fitting Finnish driver at this point in time. Second one's actually not off that. 954, 202954 for Max Twig. That's in pit. That's car 90. That's the BMW that looked very, very quick and had good pace in the M class. But who's got position at this point? So first is 46 laps. Merrill Ingalls clawed back into this. Yeah, they're doing all right. So it actually is the lead race that we were watching, and I think the Techno Autosport McLaren has dropped off. The Ferrari's third with a nine-second gap. He's actually catching Maro Ingle now, who would be positioned in one of the Mercedes. Anyway, Marco Whitman is still at a chance with the BMW as well, because he's nine seconds off, a further nine seconds off the lead with .2 off the Ferrari in third. Marco Whitman's DTM champion twice now. Guy Smith, that's one of the Bentleys. Warren Luff, that's one of the McLarens. Yeah, well, there you go. Updated. And a Lamborghini going slow. More drama. Why not? Hmm. Actually, I think about New Envy. I don't. I don't think. You don't think at all. Actually, didn't they play a game today? They actually a lot of teams have had. Well, their G2 debuts. played a game. I don't think New Envy played a game today. Fnatic. I th HLTV.org. Well, let's see here. No, Envy are playing right now. Actually. Oh yeah, the Lamborghini spun at the freaking the cutting at the chase. Actually, that's even worse. That's like a 320 kilometer an hour accident. Um. This is not Formula One I'm casting. Learn racing. This is better than Formula One. That's what it is. Just gonna share the care. Um, 
So NB right now playing overtime. Heroic, and they're in overtime, and it's a 1-1 series. That's overtime for the qualifier. That is actually a pretty important matchup. There you have it. And it's on terrain as well. Sixer. Okay, it resets. Okay, I was going to say it resets oh, the scoreboard. Scroll down. There we are. Yeah, there you go. 41 kills for Nico. Uh, not Nico, Mouse Sports Nico that you all uh, love and adore. Nico for Heroic. Kadian actually with a plus 10 rating. I'm impressed. Not bad. 40 and 30. It's only a plus one for Scream. So he's the only one doing anything right now on the French side. But I think that's... Is that the map total? No, that's, yeah, that's, yeah, all, that's maps. all maps. And it won't show me just... Yeah, okay. Well, you so can click on us too. Could do that. There and then go. it's Happy that led the way. It's Nico on the other side. It's Nico on... all. Oh, oh, Mirage was a slaughter. Yeah. It's a rough time all around. And the first round's going to go, as with the second, to Heroic. They're going to sweep out overtime. New Envy's going to have problems. Happy. He might be stuck in ELO hell now for a while. Oh, G2 are playing Fnatic right now. G2 are playing Fnatic. It's 9-6 at halftime in favor of Fnatic. So the old boys versus the super team. That is a game I'm sure everyone's watching. Not and a bad it's one five to start straight off with. rounds for Fnatic, it appears. Is the score... Yeah, okay, so that's not... This is at halftime, so we're not going to see it all. Yeah. Well, that's fun. There you have that's it. That's fun. Is it the final game for the qualifiers? Oh, I think so. One so. Of them That's are not gonna crazy. Make it? That's actually insane that those two have to play. I want to see both those guys in Katowice. Well, you're uh, not. Big plays, heroic or envious loser. Okay, so maybe not. I think there's a knockout stage in that then. All right. Well, yeah, actually, Navi. Wait. Navi plays envious, heroic winner. Um, who right. else already played today of the new rosters? Fnatic beat Mouse Sports 2 1. 2 1 against Mouse Sports? Come on. Oh, well, they, okay. Well, Mouse Sports won cash. That's true. That's true. The last player is apparently joining the server. Spell and I imagine they're just fixing that problem. He'll sit. The rest, like I said, are out back. Snapple's already on the stage waiting for his chance to introduce the players. Now, as I was saying, Godsent. They lost 2-1 to Tricked. So Godsent That's is Hunden's team, isn't struggling. It? Sorry? That's Hunden's team, That's God it? Hunden's team. The fact that they lost 2-1 to them shows that Godsent, Pronax, I'm sorry, man. If you've got that genius in your mind, it's time to unleash it again. And to be fair, though, going up against another God in Hunden. Not the easiest of tasks? Not at all. Not at all. Big Epsilon, I'm just peeking it. That's a, that's a demo, yeah, so that's where we are. Oh, actually, they were playing with a with a stand-in as well. Were they? Philip Fekiguden. In place of Twist? Yeah. Does that suggest that Twist is not actually going to be part of this roster shuffle as we expected? Seems that like he's going to go join Michael Lilly's team and he refuses to jo join in with, with Godsent? Yep. Or am I overreading on that? No, it seems like it, and that's kind of what the rumor said as well. So we'll we see, see how it goes. Um, I'm just going to peek as well back at that score. Heroic is 22-18. The double overtime, and they're on map point for it. We're getting our monitors fixed. Snapple's on stage. The intro's ready. We'll send it. TV mukaan. Hyvä yleisö. On aika aloittaa Assembly Winter 2017 Counter-Strike Global Offensive Finale. The first team, what you saw quite a lot on the stage, is definitely the Outlaws. They feeling a little bit tired, a little bit worn off after the tight games against LGR and the last game, obviously. They prepared a little bit, talk with each other after the game, normal stuff, nothing new in there. And they are feeling comfortable with the map picks, especially with the Overpass and Cobble, which are the two later, later on maps. But it's time to get the team on the stage. Please give it up for Outlaws. Starting from the left, it is ACL. Next to him, it's rocking. In the middle, spell on. Next to him, Zeria. And last but not least, it is Bartulis. And their opponent, they had a little bit longer break. 
They used it watching the game, going through a little bit of analyze, preparing for the map veto, and they got their best map through its dust too, which will be starting. That team, obviously, Dislon. Starting from the right, it's Petit Sklen. Next to him, it's Pollux. In the middle, it's Lambert. Next in line is XPG. And, and Sugar on the bottom, it's Metayo. And for our English viewers, it's time to head over to Halvor and Matthew. Vendetta and Sedekist, it's all yours. Suomalaisille. I think we're back. Already. We are. He's still sending it over to us, but we're back already. So, with that said, we're going to jump into the final. And teams introduced on stage, problem solved, Dust 2 to start it off. French teams pick. They were successful on it in this morning's endeavor. Mid-afternoon endeavor. Yeah. We're getting late here. I think we're almost at uh, 11 o'clock. So if we go three games, we're going to be looking at a 2 o'clock finish. i got to be at the airport for four. This will be a good time. That said, I think it does favor the French on Dust 2. I do so as well. So... For me, the, this game is really just going to start on the second map, which is Overpass. Again, we haven't seen that from either of the teams so far in the tournament. So it's a big question mark as we go in to the finals. And uh, I think that's going to be the, well, obviously it's going to be the decider if the French pick it up now or pick up uh, Dust2. But uh, I think that's where, where Outlaws are going to have to to bring it back. Because I don't see it be, like, Dust2 being a strong suit for them, seeing how it's been their first ban for every single game leading up to the finals. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, that's that's something we have to note, that it has been their first ban for just about every single game leading up to the finals. Mirage was banned out first this time by the French side. They don't yeah. fancy it. And Nuke gets taken out by Outlaws, so they don't fancy going to that again after the last previous Understandable series. as well, yeah, because Dislaun did play Nuke as well. Yes, absolutely. So, well, I think it's a, you know, overall a fairly decent map pool. Again, we're a bit of a question mark on how Dislaun is going to be on overpass as well, but remains to be seen. We've got 9 out of 10 players on the server. Yes, so we do. should yes, be we getting ready do. to start and things off as well. I think the 10th is in spec spot right now. It appears that it may actually be yep. spelling again. No, he's on the other side. On the he's on the team. team. So that, that's why. So there's probably 6 actually on that team. We just can't see it because the way the overlay works. That is. The way the well, graphics actually, Yeah, Lambert's work. on the... <laughs> he's stuck in spectator. Because, yeah. So swap team spelling. And yeah. then Lambert can join. And I think that the reason he's not swapping teams is because, as we can see it on the camera, well, they can see it on the camera. Yeah. You guys can't because you're stuck on us. Sorry. That's he's got more deal help. With. He's got an admin behind him right now that's trying to fix another issue. So he's looking frustrated. So, you don't want to go into a finals with a ton of technical issues, obviously. Even if it gets fixed, you have to expend energy on solving it. Which is obviously not great. You want to focus fully on your game. I'm gonna and they've already out. had a pretty big semi or pretty long semifinals that definitely took some energy out of them. A very long semifinal that took some en energy out of them. Yep. In some ways, you could think this this pause process, technical or otherwise, might benefit them. But at the same time, they're not like they're relaxing. They're all sitting on stage waiting, and he's looking frustrated. So it doesn't really do that. There's no advantage to this. It really isn't. Well, quick thoughts on Dust2. Do you think it's just going to be a mow down from this loan? Mow down from start to finish from the I French team. Two talking. Um, I don't think so. I don't think that. I mean, look, it's a final. They've earned their spot to be here. Yeah. And Outlaws has proved to us throughout the course of the two days, a very long, grueling two days, that they're up to the challenge. And in, in saying so, I don't think it'll be start to finish. Now, what we do see at tier two, tier three level is that momentum is everything. And oftentimes teams get frustrated early and have to recover. So it could be possible that they get out to an early lead, but I don't think it'll be. Clear cut, start to finish. Yeah, that's my guess. That's a fair assessment. Not for right now, hopefully. Well, Lambert's made it onto the CT side at least. So 
He's on the server, just not on the right team as of right now. It's spell and still sorting out his issues. Not really sure what the issues are, though. But he's sitting down at least, so that's a start. It's true. So I think he's joined in the right team as well. No, not quite. In fact, Tislone's going to send Lambert over, and Red Rover calls Spell, and they're going to swap, and they'll play on each other's team. It's the only way to go about it. Well, Meanwhile, well, how's the racing going? Yeah, how is the racing going? Live timing. I think they're catching up to the pro car in the front, which is one of the Nissan GTRs that currently leads. Merrill Ingalls still in second, holding off the Ferrari. So it's Nissan Mercedes AMG GT3, Ferrari 488 GT3, BMW M6 at the hands of Marco Wittmann, and then Guy Smith catching in the Bentley. Lead lap currently only has the top nine cars on it, which spikes to the fact that the McLaren, one of the favorites and defending champion, has dropped well down the order. Alvaro Parent, after they had the misfire, is five laps off the pace. And a number of other favorites are truly off the mark, too. That said, we're getting into our final. We see some players in the server. That's a good sign. It is, it is. Still a little spell and needs to figure out where his M button is and select that CT side. As for right now, still getting help from admins. Not really sure what's going on over there. They're bringing him some cables. A ton of cables, actually. So he's got a lot to choose from. I'm assuming maybe it's like something like his headset or something has given out. Might be the case. Ducks down to sort it all out. And Vittman's in the pits as well, so that opens up the lead race. There we have it. That's nose to stern as well. I linked it earlier in the chat. The Ferrari was the fastest in qualifying at the hands of Valander. Now it's got the Australian pro in it, Craig Lowndes, <clears throat> who has the fastest lap of the race. Mercedes is all over the back of the Nissan, and the Ferrari's going to capitalize on this. You watch. I'm going to call it. I'm not going to do exciting race casting. I'll save that for when I cast Formula One in the future with Martin Brundle. And Vittman's got a break fire. They've got a break fire in pits right now. Just, just completely ignoring it. They don't need to because it's air that cools it. So the problem is when it sits there, they boil. The only thing that matters is if it boils in pits like that is if the... the and they run really high synthetic fluid. But if it, if it boils the brake fluid and causes brake fade, what it wouldn't do because it's actually just excess rubber left on the rotors. There's carbon ceramic. So I shouldn't say rubber, but excess residue that sits on the rotors and overheats. So as long as they have a fast enough pit stop, if they sit there for a long period of time, then it's an issue. All right. So flames, not a problem. Still issues being had. He's got four people around him right now. Spilling, so not really sure what's going on. He has disconnected from the server, though, and that's not a good sign. No, it's not. So the issues continue to exist. So it's the in-ears that were the problem. I've got a set. You can borrow mine. Just kidding. I have a lot of earwax on mine, and they probably don't want it. Yeah, Twitch chat. Amazed by your wisdom. What, racing? I grew up around it. I'd be disappointed if I didn't know at least something about it. Well. We'll see if they can get this resolved. I'm going to link the battle that I'm talking about for those of you who wish to watch it during this delay because the battle is heating up. The thing is with endurance racing as well, we're on hour, they're at 9.42, they're hour, two hours and 18 minutes into this race. You can't just bonsai sprint race move down the inside because as soon as you do that, you cause vulnerability and potential damage so you have to play a strategic battle but you still want track position running one two three like this is fine unless you hold yourself up for a potential fuel strategy later so if the ferrari's lighter on fuel he needs track position so he can get a four to pit stop earlier if the nissan's heavy on fuel he's in a great position because he's holding everyone up and can run a longer stint it's all about safety cars over a long period of time which is why teams that are five laps down i would say are out of it but if you're one or two laps down you can claw back to the lead lap we saw the phoenix audi with marco Vittman do that last year unfortunately not marco sorry Marcus Winkelhock, but I think Winkelhock's car was the one that went into the wall early, so I unfortunately don't think we're going to see Winkelhock. That said, I've got news. The game's about to start. It is. All players on their respective teams. Crowd's getting into it as well, and 
alive we are. Fist around once more and uh, two smokes, four flashes being picked up on the T side here for this clown. It's going to be as well a position on toward catwalk for Pototus. They cover off mid immediately so that they can't push down. They can't try and take control of a fast play on these pistols. But what it does do is leave long open. They've already established that. And not only that, they've gone for a bit of utility on the terrorist side, which means they can smoke off down towards CT, isolate it from the long position. And they've done exactly that. Crossover. They've got a covered flight gap in it, but they've got shots to work with. They'll be able to go for the safe plant as well, having pushed them well off the platform. And the retake already has to be a possibility. Spellings along with the kit. And this can be covered well from Carr, from Goose. Pollock's going to cover exactly that position as the rotates start to work around. And Spellin still wants the USB shots as he gets ever closer with his teammates grouping together. And it's going to be a brawl on the site. Crossfire set. One for one, making a double up now for the terrorists with a bomb down. And remember, the kit has to be on it, but there's a smoke out. He's on top of it. There's three seconds left. They're still doing damage. They just barely find Cirque inside of the smoke. <laughs> Kenny does with a very narrow win there. A bit of a ballsy four-man retake attempt from Outlaws there. Normally you'd see CT forces try to split up to make it a tiny bit harder for Dislong to actually keep track of where everything is going down. In this case, that was, almost works out with that one smoke and the diffuse kit on spilling. Not going to be the case, though. But again, nice take from Dislong. This is something we saw Conquer do actually a lot when they played Dust2 on stream. Just getting control over Long early, setting up the smokes for Catwalk and spawn from Long. That makes the push without having any sort of fear of getting taken out, taken out from Plateau early on an issue. And, well, three merry men go marching in the B-bomb site. Spellin gets taken out, and that's an open B-bomb site. Bomb's going to get put down by Pollux any second now. And the rest of the Outlaws team over towards Long, not going to find anything at all because the rest of the T's have vacated the premises. And right now, holding on to one smoke, a flash, and four PT-50s. But the main reason for them not going aggressively towards the B-bomb side is simply because they don't want to give those SMGs any sort of a moaning bonus. Don't want to get easy kills and allow Dislam to build up their bank any more than they have to. So, time's going to peter out. Bomb's going to explode. And a 2-0 lead for Dislaun early on. First map of the Grand Finals. Not a bad start. Dislaun, this is what we said on Dust2. It's their map. It's their side to take advantage of. Scout's going to be brought out immediately for Lambert. And we saw them a lot of impact with that op on all three maps, really, that we saw them play in the, in the semifinals. Not necessarily with the scout, but with the sniper. So look for him to do some good stuff for the French side. And again, it's heavy long focus from Outlaws. Three players on the corner just waiting for Rocking to flash him out. He's going to catch Meta, but he's going to be in a position where he can actually bail out. So a lot of information gained. He even gets the kill on to Partotus with that grenade. Right now, it's just cleaning up, racking up eco frags, happy as ever. And it's three men down. And the rest of the Dislong team is moving up on catwalk here. Only Rock One, or Rock King, to hold back. And he's going to show himself. He's going to get immediately taken out by Pollux. And that leaves Spellin all by his lonesome. He's not going to do anything at all. So five men survive both into ecos for the French side. So even though they end up having one round where they only get one kill, it doesn't really matter because it. They don't take any sort of economic damage, and now they get into that bonus round that you spoke of earlier in the semifinals, where they can try to basically snag one away for free. But look at the investment here from Outlaws right off the bat. Double off setup on the CT side. Some bomb petite skills hands as the guns come out. Double off aggressive buy, as you mentioned. Early on, and Spelling gets caught. That's one of the options missing a shot. And return serve from an AK down the tunnels at B. As meanwhile, ACL dropping the last half of the name is going to try and play inside the middle. Had a great ace for Outlaws in the quarterfinal this morning that ultimately swayed their fate. They've had two close matches today. They could have easily gone down at a top eight position rather than here in the finals as they find themselves. Molotov through as the smoke goes out of the right side. That's going to disallow them from running around effectively to the left and splitting on B with the line on the corridor inside of the smoke. Rock 
expels all his ammo, and then grabs the off that's dropped and misses on all occasions. Unfortunately for him, that opens up the B site, and they're gonna have to save early. That double off by keeping one of them is gonna be very substantial in their efforts of trying to keep this next round in contention because it's gonna go four nothing for the French side. Um, and this being a bonus round for the for the Frenchies as well, this is gonna be a big boost for their economy as well. And Honestly, no reason for them to hold back at this point. If you have to reinvest, that's perfectly fine. You've already gotten away with one round for free. So, looking for the Frenchies to actually put on some aggression here, and that's what they're going to do. Petit Skell spots out one guy in pit. He's probably going to boost Pollux up. Actually, going to be the other way around. Still, UMP versus AWP <laughs> on a long battle. Probably doesn't favor the UMP, and you see the result of it there. Cirque gets taken out, or takes out Petit Skell. It looks like allies are going to be successful in saving three weapons here. Two Colts and an AWP. AWP obviously being the most substantial save there. That does make it 4-0. And we've seen outlaws get off to a couple of bad starts so far in a couple of their games, but can't really count them out at any given point. They seem to only need, you know, a tiny inch and they'll take a foot. Absolutely, take a mile. As they'll get their fourth, as we mentioned. Keeping an op up though, forces up for the CTs as a result. Save one M4 as well, so they'll play the team game in distributing the weaponry. Watch the entrance spell, and this time does better. This skill's gonna be dropped. Fast play from the French, and it's not gonna work. Nice response as Rock Moss that looks right and left of the big box on platform. And it's all down to Lambert, one versus five. Now the T side, in comparison, stark contrast to what we saw, the CTs can afford to hunt, and every kill they get will benefit the economy. That said, it's an op drop, so do you want to try and build bank further? They'll have over five digits on just about everyone in there. It doesn't even matter because Cirque's going to find it. And that means Cirque, does he want it? Do they go back to the double op? Doesn't affect, I like to do so, because he already has one, so it would have been impossible. That's why no one else was close enough. Dual wielding ops, though. I, that's an, a thought, Valve. <laughs> Please don't. <laughs> oh. Full buy coming in once more for Dislam because they had such successful early rounds. No problem getting bought up again. And again, Outlaws focusing heavily on taking long control initially. And then nobody actually even peeking mid there. Sirk so probably going to rotate back off. Actually going to go by boss. To, uh, to hold off Catwalk there. But a lot of space being given to Dislaun initially around mid here. They can, they can play around with. I haven't really taken anything, any significant ground with it so far. A couple of flashes go into mid. It's going to prompt a peek from the two Outlaws players around mid. I'm not going to find anything at all though. As the French team slowly moves their way up Catwalk and they're going to run into Cirque there if they decide to peek their heads out. Sotis backs away as well with the M4 in hand. Doesn't want to commit too much onto the long position. It's Pollux that's on the other side of that that needs to win that battle because if he controls long, you've got Cirk on ramp at A with an AWP and ACL down below. If he controls long, they have retake potential on the CT side and the split doesn't become as effective because you need to force the CTs to move and that includes the AWP. Yeah. So Pollux is backing away from the battle. They lose one already and they're not going to try and trade that back. They're going to look elsewhere instead. This will be a B split as a result, which puts pressure on Meta to try and open up one from the tunnel. Smoke out in front of him and a rotation from ACL. This isn't going to go anywhere. I think the French side have missed their opportunity and as soon as I say that, XPG finds a kill on Pellet in the window, but a good lineup again from Rock on the platform. He falls to Lambert, but he's given his team a chance on the rotations. Oh, no smoke in front of the door, so Cirque does actually get a tag onto Lambert as he crosses over. Not doing massive damage though, but still damage done is damage done. Matt is going to go back to Upper Dark, but he's got two players waiting for him there. Might get sandwiched. He needs to get at least one frag in this kind of a situation. They're going to end up with getting zero. And Lambert, he's going to have to pull out some significant heroics here. This is the first shot. Can't find the second one either as Sir comes up close and personal to him. That's going to be a second round on the board for Outlaws. Two in a row. And swift retake as well because three players staying up at a three versus two. Yeah. Dislon, they lost the opportunity by Pollux being a little bit too passive at long, not able to force movement, and Sirk getting the first shot for absolutely free. And it causes them to relocate without effect. Double Ops going to stay up as well for Outlaws as a result of this. Yeah. That's absolutely true. And no, Dislon. Spending the last of their money, though, still going to get a full buy in, more or less. Just a Molotov missing on Lambert, pretty much. So, still going into the seventh round looking healthy. But this is a big one for the French side. 
And if Outlaws were to take Dust 2, that would be a massive scalp. Yeah, big time. Because, as I see it, Cobblestone favors them. We don't know what happens on Overpass, but they picked it. So, obviously, they're going to have an idea of what they think happens on Overpass as Lambert tries to fire in towards CT. Blinded as he were, just not able to connect on anything. He'll look for further damage to be found, and they may get it. Two players on part on A. Second not showing as they get back up toward ramp. That's Cirque. But ACL gets aggressive. Missed shot of the op. Nearly trips over his teammate. Thankfully, the petit skill gets one, but it's XPG who was looking out toward B, and Spellin's left the site to cover off mid. And meanwhile, while all this is happening, Partotas is getting aggressive in A long. And that's where the French team is considering backing off to it. And well, as they say that, Partotas decides to think better of it. Falls back into pit. And honestly, if you want multiple frags, it's probably the better position to do it from as well. Get an early one. At least you're buying time to allow Cirque to, uh, to help you out in that kind of a situation. Well, spots one. Gets the first frag as well. But Cirque is being taken down, so no help there. Good job from Petit Scale. And Meta has made his way up on Catwalk as well. So all of a sudden, this turns out to be a pretty awkward situation for the Bulgarians. And the money's not the worst state of affairs for the CTs. The two players alive don't have much, but you've got Cirque with almost 10k. Others at four grand. They'll have money to buy as the bomb gets planted. It's planted at the safe box, and the Flames will buy a bit more time. Two kits in play. They can still go for this, but it's Dislone that becomes the man with the plan. Sorry, excuse me. Let me be specific. It becomes Lambert as the man with the plan. He's got an AWP and he's inside a pit bomb planted four. The safe position means he has to shuffle slightly, but Spellin is doing further economic damage. This could force Meta to stay on the site, and if he does that, they get another gun down from the terrorists, and he's going to back out. I don't think that's going to happen. Spellin's going to be far enough away as well, and with 85 HP, they'll all survive. 74 for Spellin. That goes down to 45. Doesn't even matter, he's got an AWP, so no point trying to evaluate what else exists on the site. Exactly, so Lambert's evil plan doesn't even have to come into play for that round. As Dislon takes their fifth. Well, double ops is still coming out from the Bulgarian side as well, and we know that, and we keep saying it as well, the fact that if you invest into double ops on CT side, that whatever bank you've built up, that's going to disappear immediately. And already, we're looking at Outlaws after losing one round. Potentially getting reset if they end up losing this. Still, aggressive boost here on Catwalk from Cirque. Was able to find one frag. The last time they used this. Oh, flash comes out in the nick of time. But instead, it's going to be rocking. Actually, toasts meta in the corner of Upper Dark here. Too late to actually deploy that smoke. It's a bit of an unfortunate mistake from the French side. And actually, look at this. The setup from the CTs, nobody actually watching along at all. ACL very close to double doors. Bertotis just sitting there. It's a bit of a sitting duck as Cirque is going to take initial contact if they ever move up Catwalk. As of right now, though, no clear indication of what the French team wants to do. Oh, there we go, actually. Nice flash from Petit. Manages to find Bertotis is just sitting with his back turned. Expecting Cirque to have his back. That's not the case, though. He's got to find the second kill as well, and all of a sudden, the eight bombs that is completely open. Pollock's out on long as well. And this has to be the save this time. Retake with an op still in play, and they've all got triple digits of money. Very low, in fact. rock has got 13, 24 for Cirque in the grave, but they've got to give this up. And Dislone, uh, you asked the question, was it going to be a stomp? It's not been... A stomp in terms of how convincing the rounds are. Yeah. The numbers at the ends of the rounds have definitely been decent. Four versus three here. Far still alive in a post plant. But it's been a grind to get into the site. That said, they're going to get a 6 2 scoreline on a map that we expected them to be good on. So Outlaws has had decent T sides on various maps. There's still a chance if they can keep them in contention. They make something of this, but it's definitely a downhill affair thus far. It definitely is. And that's very true what you're saying. The fact that this round solely works out for Dislaw, not because they do any sort of strategical mastery, but it's Petit Scale finding one one good flash to take out Partotas and basically forces Cirque to back off and then Cirque tries to get into a better position instead of dropping out into spawn and giving up the entire bomb site. Gets picked off by that and then it just ends the entire round for Outlaws immediately. So we'll see how they play with it, but Outlaws are doing a good job of actually saving though. They're not doing the halfway thing where Two of you remember save, the third guy goes for some heroics and try to find unnecessary kills that not really have any impact on the enemy's economy either. So, still an op in hand. 
A fairly decent buy, considering the circumstances. Yeah, as well. For Lambert, it's going to get toward top mid, try and work its way on toward Xbox to find an opportunity. And they're going to walk out these doors again. Smoke's not in play towards CT. They want to play the pick game. Spellin's ready for a pop flash, though, on the other side of mid over toward B. XPG, watch your back, son, because you're exposed. AWP's not ready for it. But importantly, XPG took down Spellin, who had no information, was waiting for the call from CT, and the trade favors the terrorist as a result. Good play from Rock to hold off B and fortify the position as Sirk has to rotate over and get back through the smoke. He might find his opportunity as well because Lambert's still outside the window, but inside of the site. Petite skills opened it up. Good shot from Sirk. Bomb's just getting in position, and it's two versus two as Petotis has gone all the way around to try and walk back from T spawn, and Lambert will rotate out there for it to try and catch him off. Makes a little bit of noise. He may not expect Petotis to be on his right, though, as he looks toward the stairs. Long rotation, and it works out. And they can poten pinch potentially onto Petite Skill. That's a bit of a mouthful. As he tries to cover off from Closet. Quick peek spots the Nago out. Does he? Not quite. Otherwise, he might have capitalized sooner because the gun was not drawn. And as such, he goes down, and Outlaws pick up their third round. Uh, nice little retake. Oh. Nice little retake from Outlaws right there, and Pollux actually missing it a bit up in that kind of a situation. Couldn't actually find the double doors into B side, so ends up trying to go through window instead after the B side is completely cleared out. Gets taken out by Zerk. That's obviously man down that you don't really want to lose. Well, and again, that pincer coming in from upper dark, or the rotation coming in from T spawn rather than lower dark, catches the French off once more. Still though, money galore being spent on Dislount. Pretty healthy buy in their stead. Lambert getting it up in his hand. I'd really like to see how they actually take mid though, compared to what we've seen from other teams in this tournament so far. XPG kind of committing to the fact uh, to spell in because he knows the position and he's confident that he can get it. Trusts Lambert to actually get the refrag when the guy in the CT spawn is pushing out as well. Showing a lot of trust in his teammates, and that's a good sign for the French going further. Well, passive setup here. ACL just playing far back in Goose while Circus watching towards Catwalk if Petit Scale wants to poke out. In this kind of a scenario, though, you'd like to see a lot of smokes and flashes towards that car area, so you have to force Cirque out of position. And here's where Pollux as well has to try and win this long battle that they didn't get last time. That's why they're putting more members here, because that's one way to move Cirque, is to force him down the long corridor and give support. It doesn't work, they get the kill. Only one for Protodus, and that's going to put a lot of pressure on the Goose. The player has to go, it's ACL. And that gets torn, because now they're in on the site with a bomb ready to be planted. Spellin and Rock Monster have to fall away. It's a reset scenario. And that is how it's done with the control of Long. They lacked that last time they tried. Yeah, definitely did. And this time you can see what happens when you throw bodies at a problem. Usually solves it, at least in CS. And again, we're looking at a situation where Outlaws are looking to save. The question is if Dislaun is actually going to go hunting for this. And normally, Outlaws aren't really looking to take any sort of exit frag fights in these kind of scenarios. They're just focused on actually holding on to their weapons willing to use whatever utility they have left to save that $3,000. Rock is going to find meta as he exits from Longhouse. That does give away his position, and you can see Dislaun trying to close in on it, but too far away with the bomb going off. And again, they're going to be able to hold on to two weapons. So again, even though the circumstances of losing rounds is never positive for Outlaws, they're doing a good job of keeping some weaponry in their hands for every single round, which does make the job a lot harder for Dislaun. Molotovs of plenty were thrown toward that bomb site as well that forced out ACL. Well, await the fate of a force buy on the CT side. Scout M4s, one of each, and then a UMP. I take that back, there's two ASs, so anyone asses, but Jordan's is going to go back into that position at long. He's not going to play pit this time, he's actually going to play the cross beam. I call it the cross beam. The little ledge above the pit, so he can control a drop shot rather than try and flash himself back into a predictable headshot angle. Meanwhile, the terrorists start to work down catwalk. No usage of the Xbox smoke. Spellman's not peeking, though, so he may not get the chance to take advantage of this if he goes now. 
it would present itself to him. Wow. Especially the bomb for Petitska, but they grabbed that quite quickly, still having so many players around catwalk. Seems like Petit has an idea that somebody is playing close door, though. He's refusing to give up that angle. He's getting more teammates back as well, and just like that, Molotov down, angle cleared out, and that's going to leave Rock all by his lonesome towards B. This one not even going to have anyone go through mid, maybe Polux. So the last remaining member is going to try to hold off rotations, but this is going to be all on Rock. Shots through. Lambert gets Rock down. He said it was all on him. Well, the B site's all gone from the terrorist CT side, I should say. The real estate has been conquered. And the good thing for Dizlon right now is that they're finding multiple, well, they're finding success on both sites. It's not necessarily just the B-bomb site that's working out for them. Had success with going catwalk, going, well, for A splits, and also through, through mid for those classic B splits. And that's probably why Outlaws wants to talk things over, figure out what they can do to actually stem the tide here, because eight rounds already on the board for the French Cypher. Codis is doing a good job of Picking up the pieces here, though, making things a little bit more expensive for them. ACL, though, in a bit of an awkward position. Ooh, XPG oh, finally managed to net that kill in meta. He's going to find Partotus as well. So normally, where Outlaws have been doing a great job of actually holding on to weapons, they're going to get punished this time around. Only managing to hold on to that scout on Cirque. And that's not going to be enough to buy up behind. So now, unless we're going to see some magic with that scout, it's looking very likely that Dislan would get to nine rounds, but the time it has been called for Outlaws. They're going to talk things through, try to figure out how they can actually stop this bombardment from the French side. Yeah, they have to figure out something. I think your answer has been, your question has been answered. Your answer has been delivered, however you want to phrase it. Outlaws are struggling desperately to hold off Dislan at this point in time. But we expected it on Dust, too. The one thing is, is we fair. know that they're an emotional team. They like to get in the heads of the other team. That usually means teams that play like that, unless they're very experienced, can get in their own heads. They need to remember that this is not their map choice. Not that I'm saying this is a foregone conclusion. We're of only on not. round 12. But if it doesn't start to work out for them, rather than grind it out, especially where you just had a long series, it might be best to just ride it out, you know what I mean? Just let it fizzle and focus yep. on the next map. At some point, you've got to make that call, and I think in a situation where you're playing your fourth map in a row with very little breaks between them. But again, not done yet. Timeout called. They'll sit back this time on the scout for Cirque. Yeah. He's going to go towards middle this time. We haven't seen him have a lot of pressing towards mid early on, actually. He's been more focused towards catwalk and long at the start of this game. And ooh. Polux nearly catches the guy crossing over towards Pit here. Going to throw a molly down, and that might force him out or force him further back. It's going to allow for forward position for the French, at least. Well, ACL actually gets the kill onto XPG, but it's going to get returned on. Well, actually, it's Zerk. But ACL just putting in damage behind that fire. Makes it nearly impossible for him to see. And Petite Scale actually takes out a teammate in the, all the heat of battles. Still a man advantage for the French, though. And uh, no scout remaining as well. Meta going to find Spell and on Catwalk. Only Rock King left to fight for their honor. He's going to have to wait for Molotov to dissipate as well. That takes a bit of tech damage. And gets spotted as well. Rock will fall away. And he has to do so with the pistol. He's going to try and get exit kills. He knows they're heading toward long based on the plant, based on the fact that he made noise on Catwalk. So Petit's kill goes to look for him instead, but doesn't want to commit either, knowing it's a USP. Why would I give an AK up? Exactly. Why would I do that? Why, why Vendetta? Maybe because you're crazy. I'm definitely crazy. Yeah. So you would be the kind of guy who would give up an AK for a USP. In any case, Petit thinks better of it. He just stands his ground. Rock. Moving in after the bomb goes out. Petit finds the kill. But nothing really lost for Outlaws, and that's nine rounds for Dislaun. Yeah, it's a big, big, substantial lead. T side of Dust 2. Mm. And what makes this even worse for Outlaws? No longer an AWP in the hands of Zerk. To be fair, he hasn't been in positions to really have the biggest of impact so far with that AWP, but honestly, it's never a bad thing to have. And we're seeing something different, at least, from Outlaws. Aggressive push out on Catwalk. Partotus and Zerk with the Colts taking an aggressive position. But the problem is, it's only meta nearby. The rest of the team is already out of long. 
And we see them and the pistol have an execute towards that A bomb site from this kind of a position, and Meta's going to back off as well. So if Dislaun decide to go for this, it would be extremely efficient. But obviously, they don't have that oversight that we do. Stella, Outlaw's not pushing forward, just kind of standing their ground on Catwalk. Normally, you would expect them to either fall back from this or push forward. But they're just patiently waiting, and while their patience might be rewarded pretty soon, as CTs are moving away from Long, at least for the time being. Maybe they want to set up for a bit of an A split. Smokes go down for Xbox, and that is indicative of a catwalk push. They think twice of it. Only XPG getting actually put into the fire there in mid. He's not even going to commit either. Totus nearly gets bur burned for trying to hesitate on the decision. He wants to commit to the kill, but a trade favors the offense. So I, I, I respect the decision of discipline to not try and hunt that down for too long. As Medio takes up a nade behind him, that lands with decent damage. Flash hits him as well, but Molotov doesn't quite go far enough to spill over the edge. It okay, it does. It does. It actually, it's the upper part of the ramp, but that's enough for Meta to still dance and catch off for Totus. It's five versus four, and Dislone again, the French side, are going to get another plant. Ten seconds left this time. They did better to hold them off, but haven't found much more. Spelling with one. Lambert. Silence, Rock, and Spelling fell before. ACL. Any thoughts? Parting gifts, parting wishes? Nothing. Well, Dislone at least going through the motions as. They take the side there, you can see even a Molotov saved up for Gandalf. Just to make sure they don't run any, into anything uh, anything unpleasant from the Bulgarians. And that's going to re reward them with the 10th round and another eco at the hands of Outlaws. And again, this is looking like a bit of a runaway. To be fair, I don't think the score perfectly reflects the situations of a lot of the rounds, but that doesn't really change the outcome of them. So, Dislau moving out mid once again. They know they have the superior weaponry going into this round, and they're just going to set up a quick B split. First point of contact is going to come through mid as well. And Meta finds the pushing rock. He's also going to find his teammate spell in there, and this is quickly falling apart. Yeah, quick indeed. 10 is going to be 11 as ACL gets found in middle and Outlaw is looking very quiet on stage at this point in time. As I say, they've had a long day. This is their fourth map back to back to back to back. Yeah. And it's not their map choice. I would relax. I wouldn't get worked up at this point in time, even if you're a fan of Outlaws, unless you know more about their dust too than I do. But even given the circumstances, that wouldn't concern me. As long as they can feel comfortable going two. into the next map, which is overpass to remind you in this best of three grand final of Assembly Winter 2017. There's already been a number of CS tournaments. You were at one WSG in China. We've had the Major, which was arguably the best Major to date in terms of gameplay. Definitely so. Uh, and then we've got this. We've had, I, I think there's been a few others in the mix as well. I think DreamHack Leipzig was in there. Absolutely. So we've had, I think, four decent tournaments so far. Cirque, you know, take down Petit Skill to start it off. Outlaws finally getting an opening pick with the double up setup back in effect. Uh, while, again, though. while all of that is happening, though, Sir gets caught up in mid as well, and that's the bomb site lost again. And while the CTs have to scramble to actually get any sort of a retake going on, Spellin doing what he can from Catwalk here. Ooh, finds two frags. Very nicely done from him. Lambert and Pollux gone. And while we've seen this, this Lown actually be a bit scattered in these kind of afterfly positions, especially towards this B bomb site, but solid position from Meta here. Has a chance to pick out ACL. Will do so as well in XPG. Finds two frags as they come out of tunnels, and that's going to be 12 to 3 on the T side. Very good half from the French. And this is kind of what we expected. Maybe not by these numbers, but we did expect them to be in charge. Yeah, it's, I would say, a charge worthy. I have 12-3 at half. I'm going to continue to tell the storyline as Outlaws have battled back from situations all day long that this is not done by any stretch. Yeah. But not unfamiliar territory. As, as bad as it sounds initially, but, you know, they've gotten to the finals for the reason. For a reason, so if they've managed to battle back from this before, no reason for them not to be able to do it again. Oh. Pistol is obviously going to be of great importance here for the Bulgarians. And again, opting to go with two smokes and four flashes. Same setup actually as Dislaun. 
but unlike their French counterparts, they're not going to opt to go for long with their entire team. Pollux, look at him. He's on a bit of a run here. Pollux is already up in top mid. He is. The problem is he's getting information that there's players on A. He thinks he's so clever right now to flank out. That's a sales pitch, and it's going to work. Spelling gets found, but they're going to get the kills, and all of a sudden, hang on, guys, bombs at B, which means there's still pressure applied. Rotations are desperate to come back through middle in time, but XPG's found inside of the doors. Fatigue gets there just to the nick before they get toward the plant. That's going to catch them off. Good play through the window from Vertotis, but immediately countered out, and Dislown. 13 rounds will have momentum to find 15 potentially with no bomb plant as well for Outlaws. Yeah. And even though in that kind of scenario, Pollux information pretty much oh, probably gives them false sense of security as to Petit is already spotted out two people coming towards Long. Pollux is on his way behind them at Long. So it could have created an over rotation, but in that case, in any scenario, you will probably get a favorable trade coming out of that situation. So even if you do get taken out of position, you can still work with it and a potential after plant. Just long, taking charge immediately off the bat in the second half. Now, Force Spike coming in. Tech Knight's armor, we've seen this work plenty of times for Outlaws. This is how they kind of started all of their comebacks, pretty much. It's true. So, and you can see Dislam kind of respecting that already, taking very long distances. Meta and XPG both playing inside the B-bomb site, not, not wanting to actually play close up to those double doors, which is understandable. Petit probably being the bravest of them all, playing up close by Cave. Here we see Cirque just waiting for the splash to come through from Spellin. There we go. That's going to be the ghost sign. Smoke off, CT spawn, meta spots out three. It's going to smoke off doors. Smart choice. Well, meta inside of the site does what he can on a pistol as outlaws. They do pull back the situation. You called it. This is how the comeback starts. They've got a man advantage. Seed skill does come back through to find spell, and it leaves it to a one versus one bomb planted. UMP picked up for Patotis trying to hold off against Petit Skill. He's got to make it inside of a site. Not an easy task as he heads toward the window. Can't spot Petit Skill. Knows he's somewhere toward the door inside of the smoke. But he's starting to second guess his own prediction and therefore perhaps overthinking it. As a Molotov thrown into baited out. Now they can play Ring Around the Rosie. He's just got to go. He's got to force the issue. And all Patotis has to do is stay alive. So he tries to go to the window in doing so, but it not, it's not going to be enough. The kit will be. It's going to be a defuse. It's going to be 14 rounds for Dislone. It is. But the bomb plant does allow for Outlaws to get yet another force buy in here. It's going to be a stronger one as well. But honestly, it's all what they can do with limited utility. And imagine if they had a couple of nades for that after plant. There we go. One Galil, a Deagle, three Tech Nines, and a whole bunch of nades on the Bulgarian side. That's what they have to go into the final battle with. And they're going to just come storming out long. Full out Brawn here. And the trade's not working out. Spell and Rock, two remaining players. Only Spell and to go now. Tech Nine in hand. Wow. Not going to be able to do it. And no bomb plant either. So, map point for Dislown. Great start to the final so far for them. Well, forced by Out of Outlaws. Fantastic start by them as they hit map point. Map one, grand final. Three rounds only for Outlaws, and they go to a scout and a Galil and Tech Nines, a Deagle, everything they possibly can in this scenario. Lambert's going to get the shot on Spellin. Start from Dislam once more as ACL is tagged up as well inside of the doors. 15 HP left for him as he backs out a long rock. Meanwhile, take what you will from where you can. Is inside B with the smoke off in front. He's going to try and flash himself in. Desperate play, desperate measures. Greeted in the corner, but takes an M4. And hold on, because Rock, he's found an opening. Prototis has found another kill. And in the unlikely scenario, they pull it to a four versus two as Pollox is going to get smoked off. Rock even has an aggressive position. Decides to pull back from window, probably the smart choice. In this kind of a situation, at least let the bomb get down before you start losing members. And ACL wrapping around, not even going to matter as Bertotis finds one. And Rock finishes off what was an absolutely monumental round for them. Somehow, even flashes himself in that scenario and still comes out of it with two kills. Pretty impressive feat. Very impressive feat as we do potentially prolong the inevitable, but give Outlaws a chance to warm up for the next map. Nice flash. 
Rock, as he blinds himself, but still manages to hit the shot. A corner spraying through. He's going to hold that spray down. Nearly cost himself his life because has to reload eventually and runs out of bullets when they decide to peek him. As Lambert continues to peek in toward the doors with the 5-7. We'll back away. A man down on the diesel outside. Cat one push comes out. Meta gets taken care of. Rock Monster kind of removes himself from the game. Only Pollock's on site, though, and he's going to be handled with ease. As I say that, though, Lambert with a picked up AK actually finds one frag from long. There we have it. 2v3 situation. Obviously, not much hope of actually winning the round for the French, but they can do all the economic damage possible. That would be a swell place to be. Armor though, aim punch is a factor, forget aim punch, headshots are factors, and ACL finds two, 15-5. Alright, so, printing up the score time a bit, at least, and that's good to see. So, when I talked about it, they're all about heart, so not giving up until the bitter end. Got a lot of heart, you know, that, do. those Canadian hockey players, they got a lot of heart. A lot of heart. Big it's character what, buys. That's what they're all about. <laughs> Darn tootin'. Got a lot of heart. You know, full hearts, clear eyes, can't lose. Or clear eyes, full hearts, can't remember. In one any of case, the two. One of the two. Works in any case. Full on B. Stomp coming in from the Bulgarians here. Four men charging in on that B bomb side. Gonna find the first trade as well. As they cross the Ooh. door, they find two more. Lambert though, on the quick rotate, might be able to find Rock here. As he charges away. Bams out his bullets, spines two frags actually in the end. But not a bad trade given the situation. Petit is going to hide inside the smoke. Summon his inner snacks and hope to f make some magic happen. The smoke's going to dissipate and that's probably when the magic wanes as well. And it does. Spill and closes it out. Right. Six rounds on the board for Outlaws. They're probably feeling like they can do it at this point. I would imagine so. Because they've fought in these situations all day long, but I leaving it at match point. Come on, it's it's yeah. a long way to go. It's a long way to road. Like this is a bit. This is a marathon. If I ever saw one, and in most cases they haven't let their opponents to match point this early, which is also something to take into consideration. That is pretty taxing to play against, knowing that any sort of small mistake you make could be the end of it. Right, just waits on the outside of the doors at middle as well with spelling over his shoulders. Lambert's gotten closer to long. They haven't got the AWP in the same position you'd expect it to be with Lambert playing the doors as he is. It's not the car, which means catwalk is a real possibility, but Outlaws haven't looked to go there. They will now with the Xbox smoke down. Petit skill therefore has to rotate back. Again, the off is long. Finally hits the shot of ACL. Now it rotates around. It's going to play in pit early. So watch the rifles to try and do damage. And this is aggressive from a teat skill. Oh, tag and backs. That's decent damage done. Spots nades going over. He's done more than that. Lines up another. As the shot comes through from Circuit, Spelling going to be going down immediately after. But the AWP on the T side does damage until it falls. Rock, he gets the shot. It's all on Cirque. The last alive to keep the game rolling. And bomb is dropped down below. It flung over. Oh, I take it back. It's just before it looked like on our map. It was yeah. over top of Elevator, but it won't matter. XPG's got it. 16 6. The French side Prevail. prevails early. Yeah. So, first map goes the way we expected. And now we get into pretty much the juggernaut of the finals, which is going to be overpass. But definitely an impressive showing from Dislaun early on here. You can see happy about their performance, just with good reason. Double hand or double high fives all around. They've been doing that all the time. Look at that. That's team coordination. It's their that's their thing. You ready for it? You ready for it? Hang on. It's gonna come to us. Ready? Ready? Alright, let's spring it. Hold on. Let me get it ready. We're warming up. Alright, come on, bring it. Oh come on. Come on. In rhythm. You gotta okay. give the opposite hand. Okay. It's gonna okay, be. Let's do it. There Nailed we go. Nailed it. Actually, we could do the Childish Gambino. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, whatever from community. Right, yeah, Albed. 
Esports handshakes, 16 6. <laughs> like, not much to report. Outlaws never really get yeah. into the game. Struggled tremendously on CT side, which was a bit surprising because it looked like they had the right positions, but winning the important battles, taking along with bodies. As you say, throw bodies out, they get three there, and everything goes apart. They take A, they get yeah. plants everywhere. We're going to take a break because we're running low on time. Producers yeah. saying if we want to go to the bathroom, we have to go now. And I really want to go to the bathroom. So, one round done, one map done, I should say, and the French are up. We swap it to overpass when we come back. We'll be back soon. coming for you. We ready. I hope you are. Uh, my team is a bunch of casual Australian blokes who are ready to play some Counter Strike for fun. As a captain of the French team, I will get carried because I'm by far the worst player in CSGO here. Chicken one, chicken two.
On a scale of 1 to 16, the French side got 16 and, well, the Bulgarians got 6. Yeah. So we go into map number 2, and that means we go to overpass, which is the Bulgarian choice. Let's hope they've got something planned. Now, as it is their map choice, they don't get to pick the side, and they'll be starting out on the attack, the terrorist approach. That's a wrecked car. Holy! What is going on with the GTM class? That is the only Aston Martin on the lead lap. We have had... Seven main competitors hit the wall already, or have drama. That Aston Martin just went off at the, the cutting. Top of the hill. Oh no, that's actually... That's on Hell Corner. That's the first corner. That must have been an issue. He must either got tapped out of brake fail. Uh, he done goofed. Mm. That's a that's a game over. Wow, this is like the most catastrophic Bathurst 1000 or 12 hour, I should say. I've seen in a long time, but that's it. We're underway. Pistols are drawn and blood will be spilled near the bathrooms, perhaps. At least they'll be able to clean it up. The janitor will be by. As Meta tries to spot out toward Long. Now, he doesn't have full information as to what's going on inside of the bathrooms. They're going to have to play a retake already on A because no one was spotting in front of bathrooms. Fast plant. That was about the 42nd mark in the round as they're already inside. I'm going to get out of dodge as well. So favorable after bad decisions, but even more favorable when you can get kills like that. Polak's the only one to find anyone from Outlaws. And, well, from the looks of it, that's going to be the heat skill, last man alive, low HP, and has no chance in hell of actually winning this round. Well, here we go. Great start for Outlaws. And we talked about how we hadn't seen them actually play this map at all, but they've had some good success on this map so far. In the last ten, or last three months, ten maps played on Overpass, ten wins. Yep. And one of them was over Penta. That's actually a very impressive statistic. Over Penta. Yeah, 16 to 2. Woo! So, so you're saying let's get ready for map 3. Well, I mean, unless there's something special prepared from the Frenchies. I think they might be in for a rough time. Obviously, a lot of those 10 games aren't necessarily versus top, com uh, top competitors, but nonetheless, a win is a win. 
and um, I think it's safe to assume that they know what they're doing picking this map for the first time in the tournament as far as we know well actually it is the first time in the tournament because they've all played all of their games on stream well, this is Lown. a bit of a force by here CZ's picked up armor Deagles galore, two flashes and a smoke, and that's it. They're not stacking any of the bomb sites though, and outlaws, as in tradition, setting up for default, not taking anything in haste. In the Mac 10 will farm cash, while the others will do damage at range. There is a lot of range you have to cover, inevitably on overpass so i don't often like to see teams elect to go with a full five man smg stack but one or two rifles is often beneficial we'll see if that's the case here for outlaws as molotov from, from spelling will be thrown out toward the barrels that will clear the player burrowed in behind and the player of course being the skill who tries to get onto the ramp still finds one killed as well as they walk in but circuit acl will immediately respond under those kills meta He's got two, though, and he's managed to drop into the water. There's a flank coming around. They might just pull this back. It's all on the rock monster. He's tanked, and he's down. They pull it back with an eco. And now we've got the mind games going on stage because Outlaws, they tried to get hyped up in the first round. Well, immediately, Dislone looks over to them and pumps it back at them. Yeah, even got a dedicated manager there standing behind them just to make sure they hear it loud and clear, or if not hear it, at least see it. Here we have it. So, this allow them to bring it right back to Outlaws, and that's going to allow for them to get a buy-in. Then again, we see what the Tech Nines of Outlaws have done throughout the tournament, and that's what they're equipped with going into the next round. It's quick push towards restrooms here, getting a lot of ground, actually. Oh, Lambert's going to find one, going to find three, actually, Wow! through the smoke. That's huge. That's so big, and they just completely obliterate them in the next round as well. Yeah. Not as much jubilation this time as... It's not quite as significant being on an anti-eco, but still well, an important point. win. Yeah. That's all they wanted to do. Well, that does mean that they will have a bit of an easier time in the following round. Most likely, at least, because there's not going to be much of a buy at all, actually. Full-on blocks on the outlaw side. Well... Now it's all on this long, so just make the most of this opportunity. Three SMGs on their side, and all, already they're going to work here. Porto just finds one kill onto Meta, but it's quickly returned upon Lambert with a second MP9 kill, makes that a third to close out the round. So money gains in a big way. Lambert even managing to pick up that Colt that went down from Meta, and he's going to pick up an op on his own. So money looking nice for the French side already. 3 to 1 start. They got off to a superb start on Dust as well. Fantastic start. Fantastic start, you have to say. When they, you consider that they didn't win the pistol as well on their exactly, CT yeah. side on a map that's not theirs, this is exactly the start they need. Definitely is. I love playing with a lot more pace here now than what we've seen from them previously. We're already trying to make their way up short here from water. I'm closing in on that B bomb site. Splashes go over. Trades frags back and forth. It's a 4v4 situation. Still a lot of French players around that B area. SPG gets splashed through. Lux. In the meantime, Scourge. Meta and XPG finds one of their own. Puts it into two men on the outlaw side. Bombs being planted. Tempted to defuse as well. Is it actually going to go through? Oh, lovely not, shot from Zerk. Not far away. I'm actually going through. And they're going to get back on it as well. And I'm not sure they realize it. The flash comes out. They don't know he's there. He's trying to find the knife. Doesn't even matter. Dislone's going to win the round 4-1. And that time they'll get a little bit loud about it. You can see them starting to taunt each other. I like it. I like it. Dislone with four rounds already on map two. They won the first one convincingly as well. Um, this is actually one of the things you miss by getting all the players or all the teams in booths. That rivalry that goes on during a game. Especially when you have players that like taunting. Like if you go back to Inverted Pro, for instance, versus Envy at Frag by Masters, having Taz just constantly scream at Happy. <laughs> in any case, though, Bomb Plant does allow for Outlaws to get another buy in, no op, and well, just one smoke to work with. And oh, XPG, he's gonna push out, and he's gonna find Spellin as well, completely unaware of the situation at hand. And that alleviates all presence that Outlaws had towards that B spawn or B site. 
question is, what is does Lumpkin know that without pushing out further? But they're going to play it safe. They know their man up. It's all they need, really, in this kind of a situation. And they're even falling back on A as well, putting three players towards that site. Interesting to see that. One of them is inching closer towards that restroom, as you can see on the x-ray of Artotas. First man down as well against them, which is... A better scalp to take fast rotations for CTs. Remember, not quite like Nuke, but longer for terrorists. So mm -hmm. it's a big problem to go down a man without map control. They have long available to them. In front of bathrooms, potential to utilize. They have one man in the corner, though. It's Meta that's trying to wait this out. Lambert's going to get a second kill, and now Meta's going to go because they have a man advantage, but it's not necessary. He's overextended. And just like that, it gets a three-man rush toward the A site. They have to compensate for default is open as another kill comes through. Good play from Lambert on the AWP, but he's surrounded. And just like that, two versus two, plant comes through. Next BG denies it. Good play. That'll secure the round surely as we go to 16 seconds remaining. Thotis has to try and work his way back around the dumpster, which is covered off, and the truck. And they end up winning it. Close call as they get caught out before the rotations came in. Yeah, close call, but very well done by XPG G there, knowing that if he can deny the bomb flight, he's definitely, like, worst case scenario, he's going to leave his teammate in a 1v1 situation where outlaws are forced to plan very shortly. And after picking up the frag as well, just not moving from Optimus at all. Just making the Outlaws player having to make the move and setting up a crossfire with his teammate. Very well done. So, 5 to 1 start. And another force buy coming out from Outlaws. Again, quick nades going out towards B. This is the same strategy they ran a few rounds ago. And oh, XPG gets caught out. Oh, that's a big play to get inside of the site so quickly, but the skill falls back. He doesn't pick up the kill, it's actually Pullux that does, and they hear the plant going down. It's not default, there it is! Petit Skill will find it, realizing that his accuracy was on point. As such, the target was not. And the pistol to round it out. 6-1, another stomped first. I won't say stomped, 6-1, but convincing Convincing rounds, definitely so. Dis oh, Outlaws, they do get denied the bomb plant, but max round bonus is in effect, so they will get a decent buy-in. Again, more utility than what they've had in quite a while, and also an op on Cirque. So right now, though, looking very nice for the French side. Uh, they did opt side on the CT side, obviously, being this, or this being Outlaw's map. And there's Spell, and finally finds a trade and goes his way. Barely takes any damage as well. As he removes Petit Skill from the map at Lambert's there to win the op battle. That's a big pick as well. As you can see, ACL moving up towards long. It's kind of weird about actually checking restrooms. Not even going to get flashed in, but does have a teammate right behind him to potentially trade. And you know, for every member Outlaws lose, Rebite's going to get tougher. Oh, nice frag there. Managed to salvage the situation, but again, Dislo doing a good job of having players in position to trade. And even though even numbers normally favors the T side, low HP on ACL, he does pick up a second frag onto Polox, which is on 12 HP. And it seems like Dislon are aware of what's about to happen. XPG finds the low HP player, also knows where oh. Spellon is and Lambert. Was that through? He must have vision just in the edge of the smoke. It had to have been a gap. And again, nice play around the angles and Lambert already having massive impact with that op. 12 frags to his name. Eight rounds in, starting on the ninth. Well, a shot going in from the AWP means that no bomb plant yeah. coincided with their lack of success. I think Outlaws at this point are just going to force up every single round just to hope to break this long streak of rounds here at some point. Three Famas is out, or excuse me, Galil's out, the equivalent of Famas to be fair. Yeah. As XPG tries to throw a flash over toward A and support his teammate, it's Prototus that's waiting outside of the bathrooms for any information to be relayed toward him. And they've gone passive on bathrooms, but an early rotation means there's three players inside of the A site. Pullux rotates over from B there to help out. They do have Lambert in a position where he can get multiple frags. Obviously, there is still two smokes left on the T side that could prevent that. They're actually going to go in the aggressive here. CT's 
trying to clear out the new areas here. And ooh, that's actually gonna prompt a rotate from Polox as they didn't find anything at all. And this is just the time to strike for Outlaws. This time the strike is right because Dislound Cats do, but they immediately pull them back, which gives them space. Smoke's off as well on rotations as we see XPG trying to get back in position, but the smoke at Dumpster will disallow it. Boost is set. Now go for it. He's going to get the AK up, try and get Vision as the default plant comes through. And Outlaws get a burrow inside a bathroom as well. No Vision gain from XPG. And he's got to fall away and find a new angle as they work their way back inside of the site. No He'll get aggressive either. and a no smoke, you're right. They can't go for it. They've got to find the kills immediately. Oh, SPG manages to find one, Polux two. Now that leaves well, only ACL at long. And again, a successful retake. It's nuts how fast that happens, isn't it? It is. But they seem very aware of the situation they find themselves in. The fact that they don't have a smoke, they use a the flash to gain some ground, push up aggressively, and obviously being able to win their duels is a massive part of it, but they have a very clear plan in their heads as soon as this happens. And we talked about it, we saw it on those two, they definitely trust each other. We saw it on multiple of the takes, they're willing to throw bodies at a problem or just sacrifice themselves for the better of the team, and that's what you want. It's an 8 to 1 and timeout being used. The Bulgarians need to talk things through here. They managed to fight back from big deficits earlier in the tournament, but wasn't able to do so in the first map. No, and you said that the scoreline they have on this map is seven wins in a row. Ten wins. Ten wins in a row. So that's coming into question right now because eight one and convincing rounds. Massive bank account built on the CT side. They have a buy available to them. You guys can see it on screen right now. If they go for that, all things well. If they win it, fine. But they have to win two rounds in a row to break the CTs. It's all it would take, because Meta's only got 12.50, so he's not going to be in prime position in the next round. Yeah, and Lambert is, well, if he's going to reinvest, it's going to be a re reinvestment into an AWP as well. That uh, we know is not cheap. So, now it seems like they've... Well, they make a cheap AWP, actually. It's called the Scout. That is true. It doesn't it's like have the same effect, though. It's the knockoff. Yeah. AWP. It's made in Taiwan. Well... For now, though, the French is doing well for themselves. Don't have to worry about getting reset because they're not losing rounds. Eight rounds in a row, actually, is what we're looking at. And the buy comes in from Outlaws once more. This is going to be what's happening pretty much every round because Outlaws at this point just desperately needs rounds. Well, all things mulled over and considered, they'll go on to AK-47s and look to go in monster quickly, flashes out. Petit Skill's forced back inside water. is gonna try and join him by getting down into the similar pit, but Petit Skill's doing it all himself, wraps up, finds a third, looking for a fourth, lines that as well, and it's only one left. Petit Skill could have held the site solo. I say that, but let's not undo the justice served by Utility in getting him into position, and he's looking for the ace, he's got it! It's gonna be nine to one, he shuts down Outlaws immediately. And if you want something done right, you do it yourself. And Petit just takes out every single member of Outlaws, and that has to be heartbreaking. The full buy just deteriorates completely, gets shredded apart by the one Frenchman, but as you said, that does never happen unless he has teammates throwing the right flashes in time. And petit skill gets over in behind the barrels on B. Outlaws will start to push on to A instead with Tech 9s. They're going to go fast, XPG. He's got position to try and work with. Unfortunately, he's lost his teammate. He's got to get back away. Actually, hold on, overlays misled me. It's not XPG that was at bathrooms. It was actually the player who's already gone down, but Pylox is going to fall. Lambert has to stay tall. It's only Spellin' remaining one versus two. He's picked up an AWP to work with, mind you, so there's a chance he could still do something in this round. It definitely is. For now, though, Dislaun sticking together for the better part. Actually, XPG seems like he wants to go on a bit of a search and destroy mission here. He might actually run into Spellin'. But for the better part, if Dislaun stay together, like they've done for the better part of the round, should be able to trade here. And we saw where the smoke came out from, so he still has an inkling. And his hunch is correct. He's going to find the back of Spellin'. And another round on the board. This is definitely not expected coming out from the French side. 
And again, all of these con constant force buys. It's preventing Shark to actually get his hands on and off. Right now. Oh, and the hands for Sirk to go against that of the single op on the CT side. But skill again is going to work his way into the barrels. They need to get utility and to move him. They tried to get Molotovs out on pillar and on barrels in different occasions, but never once in reading him correctly. Well, again, does Lau they've been successful of not going aggressive early on. So they're going to stick to what they well, what they know and what's been working for them. No reason for them to change things up as of right now. And again, we're seeing this one and done setup that we see so often then on the city side of overpass here. Meta tucked to right in the corner at long. Lambert's going to take the first shot, hopefully drag the attention away from his teammate. All right now, well, everything seems to be working for Dislaun, so why wouldn't this? Smoke going to land in front of Lambert's position on the off. And down he goes. And this is why we're so critical of that kind of a setup, because it's so easy to dispel. Lambert still has Parkstein to work with. That covers front bathrooms. Good shot on his first attempt. They're still trying to boost out at Flower Pot to get information, but a little pop flash from Lambert. Doesn't fancy peeking just yet. The second one he will, and it was corner boost. It was actually Navi boost <laughs> to catch off. Remember, Katowice last year to catch off the player at the dumpster, but perhaps a little too fancy for their own good, because Tislam's going to go 11 to 1. They don't need much more other than five rounds to wrap up this tournament. And Lambert's having some kind of a finals right now. 17, 1, and 6. And absolutely stopping any sort of push coming in from Outlaws whenever they move towards that A-bomb site. Well, it's just going from bad to worse for the Bulgarians. They've already used their timeout as well, and Spellin is one of Bison. I think that's a clear sign of things are not right. Something is rotten. Pipi Bison? Something's rotten in the state of Outlaws right now. And, well, the Bison doesn't get put to much use as Lambert shows up once more to create a headache for the Bulgarian squad. And already three-man rotation or three-man defense on that A-bomb site. They've done such a good job of rotating it in time. Which is very hard to do when you're playing passively as well, because well, you don't have as much information to play off of. Lambert, different angle again, this time inside of the site. It's going to try and hold his off at the ready. And they'll start slowly accumulating in front of the A precipice as they want to go a man down. Of course, it was the weapon we talked about. Bison that fell first, but missed shots. They've got a lineup, and in turn, they line up for a chance for XPG to spray them down. He drops bomb temporarily, but finally, they've got a man advantage. Hardly so. As the HP, it adds up to be more on the CT spine, despite that there's more men left alive on the outlaw's approach. Tortoise is going to be the man that has to win this out for them as he goes back to bathrooms on the AK-47. Cirque, he's low, but he's in the corner. Could catch them off. They read that perfectly. Pollux is going to fall immediately after to ACL, so that's a decent trade to bring this to a two versus one and gives information as well to Prototis. Seed Skill does find his kill relatively easily. He's got smoke. That's the big aspect in this. Smoke and a kit and a dream. A dream to hold it. The peak comes out. Prototis can't find it and hold it all the way through. He shall. 12 1. And now it's tilting. It has to be tilt time for the Bulgarians. That's yeah. in your head at that point. Yeah, if it wasn't tilt time already, that's definitely going to mess with your head. Frenchie's obviously ecstatic about how that plays out. And literally every clutch situation we've gotten into has gone in the favor of the French. The scoreline shows that as well. The one round Outlaws picked up was their pistol. So it's 12 rounds in a row. That's not where you want to be. Again, we're going to see AKs come out. No Molotovs this time around, but plenty of smokes. And again, they're setting up towards that middle area, as they've done so many times, only spelling towards B. And this really, this default hasn't been working out for them much, if at all. So. With these, they're sticking to their tried and true. Lambert with a bit of an aggressive position here, seeing if he can find the first bag once more for his team. As Rock is in lower. Lambert doesn't quite catch Partotis moving in towards tunnels or moving towards toilets, towards long. And if Lambert doesn't spot out anyone soon, he's going to have to fall back to sight. So I'll read a bit a minute and he can 
assume that there is some movement. He does have meta back at sight, jumping up and down by ABC. Spot someone out. There's smoke goes down. Flash to go over. Prototis tries to get closer. He needs to make amends for the last round lost. As this is going from bad to worse at 12 to 1. Meta trying to find an opportunity. Oh, Bomb's just being picked up though by Spellin. And if Lambert holds this position for longer, it might catch him out. Instead, it's going to be the opening on the B bomb site. Lambert. Ooh, misses a sitter there. That's that big miss as well, because ACL is going to capitalize in the lurk play from Rock. Well, that's worked. Finally, Outlaws get something working. It's going to go 5 1 in the situation and 12 2 in the score. Yeah. It's a minor consolation prize for Outlaws. Obviously, even if they can make it to three rounds, it's not going to be a whole lot to work with. We saw that on Dust 2. It wasn't nearly enough. And, well, I think it's Lambert there that round sticks around in an aggressive position two for too long without actually trying to actively find information. Well, one round to go. Actually, we're going to see Zizlam do something they haven't done all half, pretty much, and that's an aggressive log push. So this might catch Outlaws off guard. They are setting up in the standard default. Still not going to do them any wonders as Lambert finds the first frag once again with that op. And now they can fall back to site and play passively as they've done all half. If they'd like to, Lambert's actually going to get boosted up on flower, bar, flower bed to get a better view over long. as Rock. Hammer's been incredible with the op as well. 19 yeah. kills on round 15 into the half. Rock is going to try and open the door. XPG will take down Outlaws in spades as he gets another one on ACL. He's a man that's also stepped up. So tit skill on 15. The rest are on 10. It's very well done from Dizlan all around. Two players left to find on AKs. Maybe just one. Cirque found but not killed. Sought but not, si not capitalized upon. I'm not sure where I was going with that one, Vendetta, but... It's going to be low HP with 15 as he walks in with Bomb. It's up to Rock to hold off the ground. He can't do it. This is a 13-2 half. Dizlam need a pistol and two more. Or three rounds, depending on how you want to look at it, if they don't find the pistol. And that is the championship. Dangerously close. And yeah, even with Outlaw's track record on this map, I don't see them coming back from this. It's just too big of a mountain hill to climb up. But it would be fitting to their story if they were to bring it back, but... Well, as of right now, definitely a lot of things that Outlaws have to think through, and they need to be perfect from the start if they want to have any shot of bringing this back. Yeah, perfect from the start. Perfect from the start of the second half, because they haven't been perfect so far in the first three halves that this series has presented to us. That is very true. Honestly, I haven't really had anyone on their side even step up in a massive way. Spellinger has been a pretty formidable performer for them leading up to the finals run. He's not having a good time. He didn't have too much to work with, though, being the sole player towards B for most of the rounds, but couldn't win any of his trades either, sitting at two frags at the half. Then again, if you're down 13-2, to two, most things are not likely going your way. Well, here we go. Freeze time has started counting down. Have funds are exchanged. And again, we're seeing smoke and two flashes being picked up by the T side. So not full on Kevlar spell on, on his end. Deciding what to do. Ops to go for one diffuse kit. Two flashes. XPG. Gonna get aggressive on the terrorist side, as with the rest of his team, as they search Spellin and push him back from the bathrooms. He runs away with a knife in hand. But it's all for naught, because Bomb's still over outside of Monster. They're trying to sell this and force a bit of chaos, as ACL still at jungle is gonna have Rock Monster with him to make the call, to get the information, and shots coming through, but blinded up as ACL, he has to fall back. That jumps them inside a pit. They've swarmed Rock as a result, and they're gonna get a Bomb plant out of this right away as ACL. Has to try and hold it off from his position. Good headshot as Cirque comes in to follow out on XPG. He managed to get Prototus in the meantime. It's three versus three, and Lambert's well removed, so only two inside of the site to hold this off. Make it one, but it's skill. Essentially a one-on-one -on -one inside of the site, but the more time he buys himself, there's no kit to try and get a defuse. 
And the rotation will be coming around from Lambert, who's just starting to arrive in the window now. And that's going to leave him in the open shots exchanged. It also serves to tell Petit exactly where he is, but ACL does damage onto him. Doesn't matter in the air. It's going to be 14. All they need is to close out now with momentum in the bye to close the championship. There we go. 14 rounds. So they win that crucial pistol. Outlaws denied once again. Comes off the back of a pretty well executed B push from the French side. Well, now does seem to be all but over. Well, three MPs and MP7. And a little is what we're seeing on the T side going into the potentially second to last round. Scout being picked up by Cirque. No armor on his end though, so aim punch could play a factor there if he's not able to connect with his first shot. ZZs and 5 sevens and armor on the rest of them. And double stack towards Monster. This is a setup that we see from time to time. Oftentimes it is when you are left with two players alone towards B though. They do have Rocking over towards Short as well. All right now, this lounge. Just taking their merry time actually going about things. Not really too interested in giving away a kill, and already Petit is going to feel the wrath of Cirque's scout put down to 14 HP. Pulix, meanwhile, with the UMP, is going to try and want into Monster. Petot is stacked up with Rock and ACL. Scout in the hands of Cirque. Well, already done damage with it. So, best case scenario so far for the Bulgarians, but it seems like the French we're moving back towards B, and as that happens, Spillum finds Lambert lurking around on his own. And now they're going to run right into that double monster setup, and it's going to work out beautifully for the Bulgarians. Only one man alive. He's going to go down as well, so as close to flawless as you can get, only rocking going down. If there's confidence to be had, it's in the fact that it's symmetrical to how this started. It was the pistol one by the T side, and then in answer from the CTs on an eco. They do the exact same thing here. They'll buy themselves some time, some momentum, some money. Now remember what they have to do on top of that is build into this game with convincing fashion. There's no more forget the game, move on, stay confident. No, you got to win now. This is it. Backs against the wall. There's force by in from this lount. Coming up from underpass. He's going to get quickly repelled by Spellen who's put down a timely Molotov as well to help him out. And he's going to get a fourth kill as well. So now Pollux, only man alive left for the French. And he's towards B, nowhere near the bomb. So he's just hoping to find one frag. He's not going to do that either. So a fourth round picked up by Outlaws. Maybe this can be the changing point of the game where they start building some confidence. Yeah, definitely time to build it. They've got to start rolling four rounds now in their name. They'll keep Cirque on the scout, but this time the T's have absolutely zero economy to try and work with. Two grand in the bank account with a two round loss bonus against them. It'll be three at the end of this, meaning they'll work their way up to $2,400 and be able to buy up on the AKs. I don't think there'll be enough money for an AWP. They'll be just shy of it. So it'll be an AK buy for Dislown as Cirque hits the shot onto Lambert immediately. XBG is going to fall as well as Spellin hits the shot. The MP7. Meta's got the only kill thus far for the Terrace. Now keep in mind. You said they were 10-0 and 0 on this map. There's a chance that this comeback could happen. It definitely is, but it's going to require a miraculous CT side. That there is no doubt. Wallach picks up the bomb. And again, left as the only one alive on his side. He's probably not going to get anything more out of this with the Glock in hand. Tries to get the frag on rocking. Doesn't pan out. And well, five rounds for Outlaws now, so three in a row. Three in a row. And guns out as we say. Now what's the call going to be in terms of upgrades? Because Outlaws themselves can't afford to go for bonuses at this point in time. They'll bring out the AWP on Cirque rather than stay on the scout. And it puts a UMP on Sportotis. So that leaves the one SMG, which is a bit of a risk. We'll see if risk reward comes into it. Because he's going to play on the B site. Standard default thus far for Dizalum. Again. Not going to move forward. No aggression coming out from Outlaws. I would be actually very surprised if we saw Outlaws try to pull out aggressive CT side plays. First off, given how they played the majority of this tournament, fairly structured and fairly laid back in that sense, or passive if you'd like. And definitely to do so, and potentially give Dislon tournament point. 
probably be hard to live down. As of right now, moving slowly towards that A site, or at least restrooms. Pollock's the only man towards B at the moment. And well, for now, that could be the right way to go about it because Outlaws do have three members solid on that A B bomb site. Flash off to clear the bathroom connector means they've got some map control to execute with. Zerk staring down that position. AWP out will spot a smoke. That might go behind him. Oh, it just barely lands beside him. I thought that might bloom deep. By the way, it bounced, but he keeps himself in contention by rotating into a different position. It's going to be a rifle brought back into support directly on top of the site as well. Yeah. Meanwhile, this is happening. The double monster setup is working out once again for Outlaws, but this time Rock gets immediately eliminated as he moves back to help out his teammates, but still, Bartotis with that UMP going to town. Lambert. Only man alive. We'll be able to find the frag onto Partotis, but it has allowed for the rotation to come oh, in. Oh, oh, oh. If knows there's one up close, Ooh. he hears it as well. He's going to switch it out to the off, but there is no time. You're right. And he keeps himself alive. He will force reinvestment, but couldn't get the bomb plant. And they knew the situation, hence why they rushed onto the site as soon as they saw him work the bomb in that position. So 14 6, 20 rounds done. And we're not done yet. Sit tight, Dizalon. They've got no pressure on them. They can play the long game and try and win this out. Definitely can. Oh. Going to be Tech 9 investment behind that saved op. Not completely depleting their bank accounts, but not far from it. But they do have a five round loss bonus coming in if they end up losing this round. So full value will be in effect regardless of what happens. On the other side, though, a little bit skimpish on nades on Outlaws. More, more importantly, though, they did get full weaponry and an AWP on Cirque. Rock Monster. Going to play an interesting angle on the site, covering off the hotspot, playing with the crosshair placement above the board. It's not common you see this, but it might be just slightly unorthodox enough to take advantage of the situation when they do try and enter into the scene. He's got to hold and be effective, and it works. There's exactly why. We're fragged, though, by Lambert. That's a trade favoring offense. Lambert tagged. He's low. Flashes through. Sprays coming out either way, and it's going to be Protonus that takes down two. In the end, it may just be enough to secure the round as well as he goes to a four versus one. And Lambert's gone. Outlaws are looking convincing to me. I think we got a comeback. It's looking like it. They've been in the position before all through the tournament. So can't count them out. Lambert, though, trying his darndest, sitting at 24 frags at this point. And it's not a bombastic performance by him from any, by any means. He's been having an impact in pretty much every round that Dislone has gotten. Well, the full buy comes out. Well, no AWP on Lambert. That's pretty much the only downside to this buy. Well, there's plenty to work around with for the French team. Right now, spreading out thin bombs on XPG, though, over towards the party. While Pollock's well, scouring out towards water, all by his lonesome. Doesn't really have any sort of backup, and he's playing the similar role as we saw Spell and Do on Outlaw's T side. Just kind of being that loner outside of B that doesn't really get to do anything most of the time. But Amber is waiting as well with smoke to be thrown at the back side of this site. Another entry point for this lawn. It's just two rounds that they need. And I know it's seven in the lead, but they close quickly in these situations. Spelling as well. It's a one and done. There's no one there to trade. It could be a one and hold long so they can play a retake. Search's gonna go down. Spellin does find it. He'll rotate back around to cover off bathrooms. Plant on the inside, boys. Don't go for the default, but they want it instead. They don't have control of bathrooms unless Pollux wins the kill. Spellin was in the open. He's gonna jump flower pot. Pollux is trying to slip in behind. Spellin gets one more, but the more important kill is Pollux securing the post plant position as the bomb continues to tick. Three versus three as they try and retake back up the back stairs as well. It's ACL down. Or rather, excuse me, it's Meta down and ACL 
Trying to work back in there, low on HP. Remember, Pulox has position on the main door. Better still, Lambert's got the corner. They're going to try and overforce onto him. They're going to get both, and they're going to get the round out. Loss continue on at 14 to 8. And we have it. Perfect situation, really, for Dislown to actually grab Matt Point. Failed to do so, though. Spellen getting that second frag as he jumps back onto Flower Bed before Pulox is able to come in from behind. Proves to be absolutely massive. And you have to kind of question how they actually played out that 2v3 situation. Polux probably doesn't have to be in a position where he can get taken out by Pertotis, especially not off the spray transfer after killing Lambert. Could have played for more time, probably, in a situation like that, but... Outcome is still an outlaw win. So, eight rounds, and Dislaun decides to take the time out, talk things through. And again, not surprisingly, more and more rounds they lose, the quieter and quieter they get. No, I think that's the right call as well to try and make sure that they keep their composure. It's two rounds to go. If they don't win this, you win to map three, Cobblestone. We know Outlaws is good on it. What a waste it would be to be that close and come so short in the end. Exactly. So, all stops are being pulled out by both sides. What an epic comeback this would be for Outlaws if they were to make it happen and bring it to a third map. It's going to be Spellin that falls back. Molotov top stairs so that the rotation can't come toward bathroom and catch him in doing so as Meta spots over to where B. X-Ray reveals to us there's three players in that side, ACL, Prototus, and Rock Monster. Oh, oh. good shot. <laughs> oh, there we as go. Well. That's one way of doing it. So, Meta swiftly removed from the game. Polox again in his standard position towards short. Lambert, the top side of underpass, making his way forward towards restroom into banana. It's going to get smoked off, though, because that's going to stem his progression for a little bit longer. Well, watch for Spellin to look inside of the smoke as it dissolves. Man advantage. He's going to spray it instead and actually fall away. He's still playing only with two players on towards that A bomb site. No rotation coming in yet. Rock is about to move up here, but it might be just a tad too late. Oh, shot in. Again, it's going to be outlaws that shut down the offense. They're looking lost. Dislan, I'm not convinced. This is, this is, you need this OT point. You need the 15th round because it's going to be hard enough to get to at this point in time for them. I'm, I'm saying it right now. Outlaws, I can see why they're 10-0 on this map. They're looking much, much better on this CT side. They definitely are. Now, they're getting some money behind them as well. So even if they were to drop it to a potential tournament point for the French, they'll have another go at it. Meanwhile, the French 13-2 at half, remember. Yeah. And again, mirrors of what we saw in the first half. Pistol being picked up by Dislaun, and then immediately shut down. Sark again to start it off. We'll fall back into the A site. Now, keep in mind for him, he's got an off against Tech Nines. If he misses any shots, they can rush onto his position exactly like that. Not aware that they're coming in from long Dislaun. They've opened it up with Meta to follow. A chance, perhaps, as they get another on the Tech Nines. This is what they needed, as they have a two-man advantage. They've got guns picked up, an AWP and an AK-47. Lambert has ASL. Not like this. Outlaws struggle against the Tech Nines, and it's map and championship point for the French. That's the magic of Tech Nines right there. And, uh, well, in similar fashion, actually, how the Outlaws got their second round in that half. It's the opera staying too passive in one position, allowing them to get up close on long there. Oh, well, it's going to spell disaster. That said, though, we did mention the fact that they will have the opportunity to buy up and go at it again. And that's just what they've done. This time, though. SPG is waiting inside a monster as well. Yeah, oh, Lambert. Oh, you're tempting fate, my friend, because Lambert's hitting shots. Uh, have silenced us all in many occasions, and you're on a championship point back against the wall on a UMP as well, as Red Rock Monster tries to get a little bit closer out of the smoke that's thrown. 
in delivering that smoke, they're going to rotate it over to Monster. That's the wrong call. This is reset as well. So it's not done just yet for Dizlan. They've got pressure off of securing overtime, but Lambert gets one back. They're down a man. Lambert has one HP on that. AWP, worse still for meta. This round's done. Save the guns because, as I just mentioned, it's a reset. They've got a decent amount of economy on the two players still alive. They keep the guns they can force in the next round. Yeah. Problem is, still a lot of time left here, but I don't think there's a big likelihood of Outlaws actually running out on the map trying to chase this. Still alone. Seems like Teet Scale is not happy with leaving this at a two versus four save. So he's going to move forward towards restroom here. And he might run right into the sights of Zerk. Ooh, shows himself. Zerk doesn't pull the trigger, though. Uh, not going to matter. Spellin. He's going to come in from long and find the low HP member on Dizlan, which was Lambert. He's just going to pick up the AWP, though, and I think that's going to prompt the save for him. And even with that, with saving that one weapon, they still should be able to actually get a buy-in here. Meta and Polix are going to be able to buy for themselves. XPG. Oh, that's the after time. Yep. And it was, why was it? I think it was after time. After time goes out as well, because I was about to say, Petit was sitting on 6.2 would have gotten or would have had enough money to drop off the uh, buy an AK for himself. It's not going to be the case now, but still opting to buy in. It's going to be XPG instead of getting that AK that it would have gotten if he held on to that op. It's going to be a tech nine on him. Lambert. Just with the barest minimum, pretty much. Head Kevlar. Ooh. That's a misplay. Zerk, it's the right idea. We see teams executed, but he didn't have the spawn for it. By the time he gets there, Lambert's already posted and ready. It's going to give the man advantage. That's a big man advantage to have because they only have one Tech 9, which means now it's four rifles versus four rifles, plus the extra body on the pistol, which has utility. And that extra body's gone for a double op. All right. <laughs> on the T side, why, why not? not? It's the only gun available to them. Oh, I'm going to boost behind this smoke as well. I guarantee it. Uh, this is the first time we saw Outlaws actually make it an aggressive play on their CT side, and it comes back to... Oh, 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 oh that jump. One more time, and he's dead. One even step backwards, and he's dead. His back will reveal. It's so close. It's there, and they get an XPG on the boost. It's a two-man advantage. The op works. Remember, that's the one he picked up. Patience pays off. Spellin knows he's in trouble now as they're two men down. And Dislown need three kills to win it out, to take it all in assembly. And XPG with the AWP is getting close inside bathrooms and Spellin's around the corner. They need a trade. If they're going to send an AWP that far up on its own, if he doesn't swap it over to the Tech-9 as his primary in this situation, they need a trade because he can bait for information and then Spellin's distracted. If they give it to him for free, there's no point. Did Spellin not see? Did Spellin get blinded up? Because immediately XPG goes on his own now. He's a salesman. He's trying to sell the pitch that the fake's over toward B. It means ACLs is on his own. Molotov lands on his face. That forces him out of position and Petit Skills got the shot on the way through. Lampert's got Protodus and all like that, it's on to Spellin. The man who's grabbed an AWP to rotate back over to the B site. One versus four, bomb planted. And he's trying to find a wall bang inside of the default. That's unlikely. Molotov misthrown. Information relayed as to exactly where he is, and it might be a wall bang to get it. It doesn't matter, Meta's got it either way. The French side winning outlaws. After fighting back in many rounds throughout the course of this tournament, finally fall just shy in the final. There we have it. The first 2 0 of the day as well. What a time to put it and bring it out from the French side. And they managed to break that win streak. Outlaws had an overpass in an impressive fashion. Look at how overwhelmed he is where the shots were coming from. Spellin did well to hit Pollux and that, but that doesn't matter. It was over before he even arrived on the scene. So the handshake, the Bulgarians, I have to say, put a best foot forward as MK gone, former G play team, former E frag team. And then it's now them to carry the Bulgarian flag. They've done it well, but the French side showing they've got depth in spades. LDLC, NVG2, the new super team. Uh, who else was in this? Devadex team. Yep, Vexed. And then obviously these guys now, and Devadex has obviously moved on, but his team that he played with in this event. And then now Dislon. There's a bunch of them. Millennium used to be in the mix as well, and before they've got pulled apart with six or leaving and whatnot. So yep. impressive stuff. That said, to take the trophy and to walk you through it, we'll send it to the stage with Snap, but we'll join you in a minute to say our farewell. Kiitos. Kiitos setamiehet. Thank you, Matthew, Halvor. Great job as usually. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Uh, I think the guys deserve it more than me, but 
at the end we managed to get to get the the trophy and it's an important thing for us since we're still looking for an organization to support us and I think the guys achieve a, a huge thing tonight. You look really confident throughout the whole series. What was going on through the overpass? Did any nervousness come in? That's a, that's a map we actually never uh, worked on it, and surprisingly, we managed to to score a lot of rounds. And we expected uh, a tough a tough match on this map, considering the stats of Outlaws uh, on Overpass, which they were undefeated before this game. So actually, we're really proud of the performance. Okay, congratulations, guys. I know there's a moment that you have been waiting for. Go ahead. It's all yours. So there you have it. The French side prevail, as they say, looking for an organization to support them. That's one way to find one. Definitely. Winning Assembly Winter 2017 in convincing fashion, the final, no less. Yeah, and uh, after actually starting the entire tournament with a loss. So fight back, never give up, and eventually raise the trophy. Quite the story from the French guys, and hopefully they'll find the support they're searching for. Yeah, I hope this. so. I mean, they've done very well in this event, and I think they showed some skill. Lambert seems excellent on the AWP. Absolutely. I was impressed with him. Petite skill as well. Petite skill, who's played with LDLC in the past. He's been on multiple lineups, so a chance maybe his name does appear somewhere in the future in the French scene. I don't know if it'll be right away with everything that's just happened, but yep. some of those plans, you know, the best laid plans of mice and men, look what happened in the previous Godsend shuffles, don't always work, and there could be a spot, a vacancy. Maybe he jumps in somewhere on that occasion. With that said, Vendetta, it's been two days nonstop. I think we've put in about 24 hours of casting over those two days. That wraps it. That concludes it. It's been incredible. 16 teams over two days in assembly, and we reached this conclusion. Final thoughts? Uh, just a uh, fun tournament overall. Fun to be in Finland again. And, uh, well, fun final send it all. Well, there you go. With that said, thank you very much for joining us, everyone. We'll look forward to seeing you in Assembly Summer. That said as well, there's more Counter-Strike around the corner. Pro League starts next week. Vegas is a week and a half away. You'll get your fix. Everything's back underway, and Inferno's back in the pool. I'm excited about that. We'll see you soon. Bye-bye.